हेलो हेलो नमस्ते सो मे बी इंट्रोड्यूस योर सेल्फ व्हाट इज योर नेम व्हाट डू यू डू हियर uh my name is ishi i um, i work here i'm one of the founders of this uh, this school and this is an awakening and healing school in thailand in kopangan cool yeah. awakening and healing indeed okay so oh, also we should speak up cuz the oh sorry i don't yeah, have a good microphone that's here that's fine the, i yes, can speak loud microphone good so it's an awakening and healing school yes. so so what do you mean by awakening what what mm. does that word mean to you um I would say that it's not so important also what it means to me. Yes, it has a certain I can describe it in a certain way. Um I would say that for awakening as we talk in this school is more connected with self development. Yeah. Mm-hmm. What for me was awakening probably not necessarily has to be the same thing for someone for someone else. Yes. Mm-hmm. Um this is a self development school particularly Samakaruna it's a non dogmatic uh, school. So we we are not neither buddhist neither hinduist neither uh, christian and we are all together at the same time um what means awakening um i can relate to myself from my own experience um somehow at some point in my in my life my my mind became more calm more quiet um and then out of that i wake up one day and everything in my life was looking very simple just very simple i have no no longer problems um and also my perception of this space was different yeah i could see and perceive things more in th- like in 3d and colors were more bright i was i was more alive than before was this never happened before and i realized how i was not actually paying attention to what was happening in the outside i was my mind like was completing the picture i was not looking yeah um and this also gave me a sense of peace and calmness that was uh, amazing yeah um on the other side within the time i also have a different perception of how things are in reality yes it helped me to take charge of my own happiness and my own balance yes mm-hmm. was other uh, before that it was a I was a workaholic <laughs> mm-hmm. so i was working uh, 12 hours a day uh, every day um and looking on the outside to get me happy yes i was uh, i was a good boy i was mm-hmm. i have a good job my own company i was uh, working a lot doing all that i should do that society told me to do to be happy yeah uh and after 8 years work it was so miserable far to be happy yeah in the outside it could look like i was happy but i was not really happy um so this helped me this this peace i got from that experience helped me to actually take charge of my own happiness understand that i'm going to be happy uh when i gain this happiness yes it's a work i have to do it won't depend on the outside it doesn't depends on how much money I have or how beautiful looks the outside mm-hmm. um i remember uh, a saying from one uh, one uh, teacher that was here yes it was from his master actually it was a buddhist master and he was saying if you have if you carry with you a uh, a piece of shit in your pocket mm-hmm. it will smell it doesn't mm-hmm. matter where you go <laughs> so uh if we are not fine it doesn't matter where you go it will smell yes mm. <laughs> and that's it um so the space itself is to to help you to stand by your own feet and take your own decisions and start getting out of this collective consciousness where we are trained to to look for the happiness in the outside and to work towards that yes the society is designed for that um mm. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> so I I heard you when you were talking you were talking about um seeing things more clearly the mm-hmm. colors being brighter 
you know, seeing things in 3D more. Yes. Yeah, I know. Uh, <laughs> that's 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 been my experience. Okay. With, with uh, what I call awakening, also, or what I used, was calling awakening myself. Um, and I wonder, uh, is that um, when you called the school awakening and healing school? So it means you have some connection to that word, I think, mm -hmm. right? How would you describe that? Why would you say that that kind of experience is being more awake? Oh, because if you feel more alive, mm -hmm. yes, uh, yeah. you are here and now in a sense that I couldn't understand before, especially being so much in my mind. Yeah, I was, um, I'm, an, I'm also an engineer and I was running a company. I was running three companies at that time. Yes. So I was, yes. Um, so that talkative mind and that, uh, um, let's say, rational mind was uh, overtaking my life. Yes. It was, um, it gets you over overdo things yes and the mind gets more more active more active more active more active and you lose the balance of your life mm -hmm. at the point that you are not here yes you are just calculate but you are not watching properly mm -hmm. yeah and that's why i would call it awakening mm -hmm. because you wake up here for first time <laughs> everything looks different yeah, yeah. so so if, if when we wake up we're here mm -hmm. where are we when we're asleep Hmm. I can tell you the uh, Buddhist uh, answer, which is called the Maya, the illusion. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, you are in a dark space. You are in the space of your of your mind, mainly. Yes, mm -hmm. and and you are you are there. And, and for most of us, we think that we are that that voice. Huh? Uh, but it's a um, it's a very dark space. Mm -hmm. It's a miserable mm -hmm. place. Dark. Dark. You use the word dark, and and you know, in my experience, uh, a little bit less colorful than out here. So yeah, maybe that's that's what you're talking about yeah. with the. But it's a it's a place of misery. Mm. Yeah. Uh, as far as you are, only in your left hemisphere, only in your rational mind, um, you are all the time calculating, estimating, seeing what's the next step, where to do next, what to reach next. You are never here. There is never peace. You are, you are uh, never in peace. You are always looking for. I can relate to my experience. Always looking to, for, for the next thing that you are going to grab, for something as where you are trying to gain. So when you get this space in the future, which never gets, then you can uh, relax and be here. Um, but that space probably never gets there. Mm. So, um, how do you get to this awakening? How do you get to being awake? Uh, you know, some people have uh, different styles of meditation. Oh. You know, some people, there's in some monasteries that we went to, they only sit all day. Some monasteries, they focus on, you know, mindfully sweeping and doing things like that. Some places um, have, you know, focus on yoga. Uh, how how do you think is a good way? Is there only one way? Are there more than one way? How do you get to this awakeness? Oh, um, I would say it depends on the person. Yeah, um, each person can get there from different ways. Um, my way is not a good way. <laughs> <laughs> what we do here in the school is a beautiful way to get there. Mm. Um, Wait, what do you mean your way is not a good way? Oh, I broke a disc in my neck. Oh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and and that gave me an, an a really bad bad pain mm. as I never experienced before. Yes, um, and I was doing martial arts for a few years by then. I was used to break stuff and just go go to the hospital. I was good managing pain, uh, but not that pain. That pain. Uh, um, was really, really, really intense, and it was 24 hours. I was uh, not able to escape. Yeah. Mm. And this mind I have, I was seeing myself undefeatable. Through my will and determination, I can do, can go through anything. Don't get to my space, because mm. I'm going to, something is going to happen to you. Yeah, mm. I was uh, very much in my ego as well. Um, and this pain at some point defeated me. Mm. 
I, I couldn't I couldn't fight anymore um, but out of that pain I don't know exactly how it happened but the pain helped me to calm my mind um, I, I can, you cannot tolerate pain for long so I guess at some point I just started watching the pain um, and that helped me to yeah huh. calm the so, mind. so for you it was suffering intense suffering that brought you to allow yourself to wake up a little bit by just letting the mind quiet stop fighting exactly. surrender surrender basically surrender that's yeah. it yeah that's um, the word yeah that's and uh, many paths yeah. use surrender to wake up yeah um but, what do you what do you think is a uh, are there a lot of different ways uh like to wake up like uh, the ways that you teach here hmm. um yeah there are many ways to wake up yes uh you can do it slowly yes progressively or you can have up mm. yes mm. <laughs> probably the one that works better is the slap yes yeah. <laughs> wake up <Yeah. laughs> uh, but indeed it is it is possible to do it slowly progressively mm. do you think um, do you think that it's permanent when you wake up like uh, are you permanently awake or is it go through no I don't think it is but, mm. uh, and I can say, for me, I have six months in my life where it was mm. all day in an amazing wow. state of happiness and peace. Yes, mm. all the time, each moment in bliss. Mm. Um, and after the six months, progressively start shaking. Mm -hmm. um, and then I have this, uh, this experience. Um, I remember one particular day something happened. Yeah, and that mm. uh, take me out of the space. It took you out of it. Yeah. Mm. So now I'm able to go for certain periods to come back, mm. but it's not all the time permanent as before. Huh. So in that six six months, you said, yeah. um, what what was that like? Was it like um, did did you just abandon everything that you were doing, or did you keep working, or what was what was um, that like that six months? Oh, I did many stuff. Uh, mainly, the injury helped me to sell my company and to take things more easy. Um, but at the same time, I, I plan a trip to the UK to move to UK. I organized a few stuff. I went traveling. I came back. I went to to live to UK for a while. Hmm. Um, many stuff in my life. Did you feel like very? Did you feel like this is a different kind of experience when you felt that awakeness for six months? Did you feel like, wow, this is some kind of spiritual experience? Indeed, I, I, <laughs> uh, it was a, the most blissful experience I could imagine. Yes, yeah. I was just uh, happy without needing anything. Yeah. Um, I can describe it as uh, you get to a space where this present moment is perfect. So you don't need to, to wait for the next one. You don't need to rush for, for what is next. Here and now is perfect. And the next moment is as perfect as this one. Um, and yes, I can say I thought it was permanent. It was, I cannot get out of it, but you can. You have to protect it and take care of it. Um, and this is also a space for people that have that experience recently and they don't know how to manage it, to be able to develop the wisdom to keep it. Hmm. Yeah. At that time, I didn't know. I had practiced a meditation and so on, um, but I didn't know anything. Yeah. I didn't have the wisdom to understand what really happened. Hmm. Um, and I think that you need the wisdom. Hmm. So, so when you say you didn't have the wisdom to understand what really happened. What did really happen? What, what? How would you describe that? Like, what? Uh, what is it that happened, and how can you protect that? Hmm. What happened is that your mind gets balanced and calm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and then you have to understand why your mind is balanced and calm in a rational point of view, so you don't go to certain things that can affect this. Uh, yes. Like what? Can you give me an example of things that could throw I you can up? tell you what happened to me that actually took me out of yeah. it. Yeah? yeah. Um, I like someone. Mm. 
<laughs> yes, and it was very much into sex, uh, 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 sex attraction, yeah. sexual attraction. Yeah. Um, and that was, the shh, yes, no, yes, no, yes, uh, no, yes, no, yes, no. And I didn't understand how that can affect the balance of my mind. Mm. Yeah, it was, and now I understand and I teach it. Um, but because I didn't understand it at that time, mm. I went too much into it. The and desire. The, the desire. The desire, desire. And then that created the mind rolling, uh, grabbing, wanting, yes. thought, thinking. That's and then and then after that, you couldn't get back into the permanent flow of it? No. Huh. no. Yeah. But but now, the what you call awakening is the moments. Is it the moments? No, no. The awakening is, is being there in that space. Mm. You can have the experience of awakening, yes, a realization in your life. Mm. Um, but then, then it's up to you to keep it, yes? Mm. When it's stable enough, yes, and you are able to keep it throughout your life, probably you can call yourself an enlightened person mm. or something like that. Yeah. Mm. Um, but that, that's a method, it's just a word. That's like if you were staying in that six months for forever, then that would be an awakened person, as you say. That would an be an enlightened person. person. So the awakening, you have it, that's it. You have the awakening, you know, you know, you could feel it. Mm. Yes, that no one can take that from you. And, and being awake in one moment, does, yes. you know, is that the same thing as being awake for a long time? You know, is it... Oh, is I, that's something I cannot answer you, mm. because we get into these uh, fi uh, like uh, fighting to to see, oh, I'm awakening, I'm not awakening. <laughs> oh, my friend, no, no, no. It's, it's a path of power again. We are getting out of it. Yeah. Yes, you get for power. Mm. Oh, I'm an enlightened, I'm awakening. No, I'm more awakened than you. Oh, <laughs> oh no, no, no. no. <laughs> you're awakening, no way. It's for you. No one else. It mm. doesn't make you any better than anyone else. You mm. cannot be any better. Of yes. Course, yeah. So if it's awakening, it's for you, and you don't have to, to be. To say, oh, I'm more or less nothing. But yeah, but that's not what I mean. I mean, yeah. um, when you use the word awaken, yes. uh, awakening or being awake. Yes. Um, so that, that can be in a moment. That can be in a moment. I would of... say that you have to feel it more than just a moment. Mm -hmm. Yes, to really understand it and, and understand the peace that comes from it. Yes, mm -hmm. because you can have the experience for an instant and you feel some peace, but you don't understand what it means to live in that space, mm. yes? Um, to live with it. To live with it, because mm. the whole path is to live with it. Mm. Um, to be awake for a certain time. To live yeah, in to that live, space, yeah. yes. Hmm. So, in that case, would you say that you were awake for that six months, but now, because you go back and forth into it and out of it, that maybe you're, you wouldn't call yourself awake now, or that you would be half awake, half asleep, or sometimes <laughs> awake? Uh, I can say I'm a, a person that is realized. Mm. Yes, I have a realization in my life. And then, through this realization, I have a mission in my life which is clear, mm. yes, and I know what's the path for mm. me, mm. yes. And through that experience I have, I feel inspired to help other people mm. because I, I know how miserable and terrible it can be. For them to realize the being awake Ex also. Exactly. And, exactly. Um, and, and for you, you don't need to be awake all the time. You're fulfilled by, by helping other people to realize that too. Yes, indeed. That's, That's um, what you might call the bodhisattva path. Is that, is that about right? Yeah. I, I know the, the word bodhisattva, Buddha, they have all these <laughs> connotations or whatever. You know, people think of them as ego things or whatever, but I just try mm -hmm. to understand how people mm -hmm. kind of go on their paths. Um, you know, to me, the Buddha path is is like trying to be awake all the time. Buddha means awake, right? Mm -hmm. And Bodhisattva is, is somebody who's kind of trying to to help other people have that awakening and that realization. Yeah, I try to, what we try in this school, not, not, not me, yeah? um, what we try is to to develop what is there for you, what is the, your best self in this in this uh, life? Yes. Um, I also see that probably it was in my case. This is the, the way I should be. Yes. I try to. I at some point when I get out of that space, I was try. I was the long have the longing to come back to it. Yes, this amazing space. Yeah. Yes, and the longing to get there it was pushing me a more, bit more away from it. Yeah. Um, huh. yeah. So now I understand that actually maybe it's meant to be in that way. Because in this way, 
I can have this both me, the, the me that was a businessman and is very good at creating stuff. Mm -hmm. Like now we have this new center coming and I'm chuk, 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 Yes? Yeah. Um, and I have the other one, which is, the other one actually is happy, yes? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, which helped me to have a good balance, yes? Uh, and maybe one day the existence will, will give me that gift to, mm. to come back to that space. Uh, but maybe at this moment is the way I can help more, and that's why I'm this way. Hmm. Yeah, that's interesting. It's, uh, I sometimes think about that too. Is it, is it better to go completely just stop what you're doing and just let yourself be awake and then maybe you can help more from that space or is it better to actually go into the world and try to yeah. help and you know keep maybe mm. keep yourself a little bit out of that awakeness yeah. i know i have i think has, about that sometimes yeah it has to be a balance uh, like everything else um you i mean if i'm really if i'm bad within myself um probably i cannot help others yes mm. but I don't have to wait until I'm an amazing, uh, enlightened being, I'm yeah. levitating <laughs> or whatever yeah. to start helping people. Yes, then no one will help anyone. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, and I can say, because there are two sides, and I can see these two sides. Um, also, how I run the school usually, um, there is the side that is more loving and, and caring, and I like, you know, creating this, this energy all together and being in that space which is what actually matters in the school. Um, and there is the other side that is a resource management, which we live in a world of limited resources. Yeah. So I have to be also calculating resources and chuk, 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 chuk. yes, um, sometimes you are not able to be, you, you cannot be at the two spaces at the same time. Yes. Yeah. Um, so it's, yeah, balance. This is about balance. Yeah. yeah. Um, I guess I just have one more question before we wrap up because uh, I know you have limited resources. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so, um, yeah, do you? So, the word awakening, a lot of people use it. Um, and what I really wonder, and the, really the point of this whole traveling documentary thing for me is I wonder are we all using that word to describe the same experience of, of waking up into this? present moment like you described I also felt that was the way I was okay. using it um, and but I wonder do you think that other people might use that word differently that's really what I'm trying to figure out um, indeed um, I can say in the Osho tradition they use the word enlightenment mm. yes and they are from enlightenment and consciousness and super consciousness and nah, 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 yeah, yeah. yes um, Indeed, they use it differently, yeah? Mm. But then it's not for anyone to come and tell to the other person which one is the one that is correct. Mm. The one that is correct, I feel it's up to you. Mm. But do you feel that besides just the word, like do mm. you feel that there are different peak experiences? Like, um, you know, the Buddha, for example. If it's the Buddha means Buddha means awakened one, basically. Mm -hmm. So if he was the awakened one and he had this experience, right? And then you have other people who are awake and they have their own experiences. Maybe Hindus, maybe shamans, maybe Buddhists, maybe all different kinds of people have this experience that they see as like the top, the peak, the, the most, the mm. best, the best experience. Okay. I don't know how to describe it. <laughs> You know what I mean? Uh, okay. the way, in psychology, they call it peak experience, like the highest okay. experience of life. Okay. Do you think it's all? The, do you think that that peak experience is the same from all the traditions? Mm. That they all come to this, just waking up into this moment, or do you think that there might be different peaks, like okay, that the path lead to different? Peaks? No, I think that the space is the same. Yes, they all go to the same space. Mm. Yes, uh, it's like. This is the mountain, I, I escalate the mountain from this side and some people escalate it from this side and some mm. people from this side, but it's the same mountain, mm. yes? And you get to the same space. Within that space, probably there are different depths of peak, mm. call it in a way, yes? Mm. Um, yes, indeed they are. Um, I, I have to say for me, it was a space where I couldn't care less if there are more depths of peak. 
Yes, I'm, I'm fine here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if there are more upstairs, it's okay. They they yeah. can stay there. I'm. I don't need to go anywhere else. Mm. Yes, is is um, is a state of simplicity and and just just not wanting anymore. Yeah. Which it doesn't mean that you don't do anything, huh? Uh, you, you are alive, and but your actions come from satisfaction, from uh, gratefulness, from joy. Yes, there is another space from where it comes what you do in everyday life. It doesn't come from me. I need this. When I'll be there, ah, how good it's going to be when I'll be there. Mm. We're just here. Yeah. And thank you. My pleasure. Thank you. That was perfect. Namaste. Namaste. <laughs>